today to speak about an amendment I filed to the Highway and Transportation Funding Act. While my amendment did not get a vote, the issue it addresses is very important to my home state. And so I want to take a minute today to talk about the issue and the need to address a situation that was created when we passed the MAP 21 Highway Conference Report in 2012. The conference report undid a carefully constructed compromise on the abandoned mine land program that was put together in 2006. It took apart the work that we had done by limiting the total annual payments of AML funds to $15 million per year. That's a change that only affected the state of Wyoming. We usually don't do legislation that only affects one state when a number of them receive funds. What was worse, the provision was not in the House or Senate Highway Bill. It was added in the dead of night without consulting anyone from the Wyoming congressional delegation. I was extremely disappointed the provision was included in the conference report because senators from other coal producing states and I spent years working on this issue. When the Surface Mining and Control and Reclamation Act, SMACRA, was passed in 1977, a tax was levied against each ton of coal that was produced. The purpose of that tax was to reclaim the coal mines that had been abandoned before the enactment of the reclamation laws. Half of that tax was promised to the states where the coal was mined. That was known as the state share. The other half went to the federal government to administer the reclamation program and to provide additional funding to the states with the most abandoned mine lands. It was a simple enough concept. Unfortunately, like many things in Washington, while the concept was good, clear, and well-intentioned, its implementation was a nightmare, and the program did not work as Congress intended. For years, states were shortchanged, and the reclamation work was not done, or the states did it themselves at their own expense, expecting to get reimbursed. That's the case in Wyoming. At one point, the federal government owed the states more than one and two-tenths billion dollars, while more than three billion dollars in reclamation programs remained incomplete and unfinished. The issue pitted against the East against the West, and the debate was always the same. When members from the East would argue that we should send more money to the states to support reclamation efforts, my colleagues from the West were just as certain that we needed to keep the federal government's promise to the states to provide the revenue they were entitled to under the provisions of the Surface Mining Control and Reclamation Act. In 2006, a bipartisan coalition of senators, including me, fixed the broken AML structure. It started with Senator Santorum approaching me with a proposal that had the support of a number of local coal companies, also the United Mine Workers of America, several environmental groups, and other businesses. After listening to the proposal, I laid out a set of principles that had to be included in their proposal if they were going to gain my support. First, I wanted to see the return of the money owed to states, which included $550 million owed to my state. Because Wyoming is a certified state, I also wanted to see that the money that came from the federal government wouldn't have any strings attached. The legislation accomplished that goal by guaranteeing that Wyoming was to receive the money we were owed from the federal government over a seven-year period. This is money in a trust fund. Now, trust funds are kind of interesting with the federal government because we put money in the drawer, and then we take the money out and we put bonds in the drawer. And so there's really no money in the drawer. Think about that with Social Security. It's another one of our trust funds. I'm one of the protectors of trust funds. But this, is a, this was a trust fund. It only had bonds in there, so it was difficult for us to get any money. Now, second, I wanted to guarantee that future monies would be paid to the states, like Wyoming, where significant amounts of coal are produced. Where we're most of the federal half of the tax, that's where it comes from. Third, it was important that more money be directed toward reclamation in the states where it was needed. More money where it was needed. And fourth, there had to be a provision for orphan miners' health. Sometimes that's kind of overlooked in this, but uh, Senator Byrd and Senator Rockefeller were very adamant on that, and we made a provision to take care of What's an orphan miner? That's a miner who was promised health care, and then their mine went out of business. 
So there was no company to pay in anymore so that they could get their health care. And we made a provision to take care of that. The legislation that we put together accomplished all four of those goals. We continued our efforts as a bipartisan group, and in December of 2006, we passed the AML reauthorization as a part of the Tax Relief and Health Care Act of 2006. The coal industry and the United Mine Workers of America supported the bill. Members from certified states like Wyoming supported the compromise, as did members from uncertified states like Pennsylvania and West Virginia. As a senator, President Obama voted in favor of the legislation that included this compromise. From all the available signs, it appeared that we had finally fixed the problem and helped to strengthen our state economies at the same time. Unfortunately, appearances are often deceiving. By limited AML payments in the MAP21 conference report, Congress once again made clear that taxpayers could not count on a federal trust fund to meet its obligations to administer the tax dollars it collects each year in a proper and legislatively mandated manner. This has been contested and successfully defended year after year to preserve this money. And it was supported by a supermajority in this body until, until it was included in this highway bill and included in the highway bill in the conference report, not when we had an amendment on the floor that we could once again successfully defeat with a supermajority. It came in the middle of the night, and the next day we had an opportunity to vote for the highway bill. Now, the highway bill is probably one of the most crucial bills to any state in the nation. And if all you get to do is vote yes or no, you're not going to take a look at a little portion of the bill where we steal a trust fund from one state, Wyoming. And uh, that's exactly what happened, and it passed. Now, my amendment to the highway bill this time will address the problem and put things back together the way they were meant to be. Simply put, it will ensure that when a state has been promised it will receive AML funds, it will receive them. Fortunately, I have the intent of Congress and the support of many of my colleagues on this matter of such great concern to Wyoming and to all the coal-producing states. I want to particularly thank Senators Hatch and Wyden for their commitment to address this issue created by the MAP21 conference report. This isn't just a problem for Wyoming because the next time a conference committee goes looking for some money, they could steal it from the other AML states. My amendment would also encourage the production of energy right here at home by opening up the Arctic National Wildlife Refuge to drilling. The the Congressional Budget Office estimates such an effort will increase gross federal receipts by $5 billion over 10 years. That's a lot more than we need to make this payment. There are other possibilities for offsets as well, but that's one that's a, a rather meaty. And that is more than enough to pay the funds that were stolen from Wyoming over 10 years and to pay for two years' worth of transportation projects, not just a short-term uh, fix on the transportation. I know my colleagues will see the importance of this matter to Wyoming and to all the coal producing states. It's important that we take a look at this and protect the uh, validity of trust funds that we set up and not redo them without adequate debate or an actual vote on the trust fund that we're violating. And uh, we've done that on a couple of other trust funds as well. Uh, one of the ones that uh, we also did was to impose an additional tax on those companies that have private pension funds. Because we have a pension benefit guarantee trust fund that's designed so that if a company goes out of business, a worker that works for one of those businesses will get at least 60% of what they were supposed to get in their retirement. That's why it's a pension benefit guarantee trust fund. And uh, we upped the amount that had to be put in by $80 per employee for each of the companies involved in that. And that was to go into the trust fund to make sure that those funds would be available. But we diverted those before they got to the trust fund because the actual money could be replaced by bonds in the drawer in the trust fund. And so that money went to highways. 
And that's just another example of how we're taking money from trust funds and using 10 years worth of trust fund and using it for two-year projects. Uh, we've got to change that, and my amendment would be one of the ways of making that change. I thank the chair and yield the floor.